Hey, this is Ethan Abler from Passion 47. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how do you uh, detect the proximity between one object and another object. And this question actually comes from God Immortal on YouTube. And his question was, is he wanted to be able to fade sound between when a player gets within a certain proximity. So he wants to fade the master sound and play a secondary sound. That's part one of the question. Part two of the question was is then, as the player gets closer to the sound, how do you increase the volume? So I'm going to break this down into a series of videos. I thought this might be a good way to show you some, uh, some really cool advanced techniques in Unity and you know playing around with sound, which nobody ever does. So, um, so we'll begin with, with visualizing this. And so what we're looking at is, is part one, we have the distance between these two proximity and we're going to call this dx which is just delta x and part two is this from let's say this point on we want to be able to normalize this from zero to one and this will allow us to do two things one is this <clears throat> excuse me uh, in this area in this range we can just have the sound playing and then once you reach here you know this point we can just cut this master sound out or just fade it right to zero fade out and then here we'll, in this area we'll actually go to another color in this area here we'll actually fade in the, um, the secondary sound fade it in but while fading it in, we want to have a minimum sound, which doesn't have to be zero. We, we can make it like 0.3 so you can actually hear it. And so we want to keep it normalized between 0.3 and 1. And this will allow us to still hear the sound once you reach this distance. But also we want to make sure that, uh, you know, this value never goes below zero or um, or above one so that our sound doesn't spike on either end and then of course when you get out of this area we want to fade this from 0.3 to 0 so once you go back to this distance um, this gets faded to 0 so this is actually a longer set of videos so I'm just going to start off with the first part and just break them down to chunks and I'll just keep releasing these things um, probably you know, I want to say every couple of days I'll release them and I'm going to show you some editor scripting which once again this will be really fun I'll show you some you know the way we take care of some of our projects here at Passion 47 so let's start off with an empty scene that was a long intro but I hope it explained and visualized everything for you because nobody likes math um, and so I want to make this as easy and as straightforward as possible so I'm using um, two game objects. We have one called player and we have one called target. Now in this case our target is going to be the one that has the extra information. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a component. Actually first let's zero these out because it makes it difficult to read when these aren't created at the zero zero mark. And I'm going to take the player now. I'm going to move the player in a negative um, direction, so negative um, 10. And then we'll be able to count the units. Now, <clears throat> just to make this easier to see, I'm going to add icons for this. And these will just be basic icons. And so now we know target and player. Let's create on our target a new script. And we're going to call this sound distance. And now let's open this up in Visual Studio. So now in, in VS, let's first create a couple of things. One, we need to know our transforms. So let's create public. target and of course we need to data type it transform sometimes I get to type in so quick I forget to do these 
Um, and the other thing we want to need is known to be a public, uh, let's say a max distance. Actually, we'll just call it range. And this one's going to be a flow. And then we're going to need a private variable to hold our transform. So that's cache. And then we just need a quick float. Actually, we'll make this a, a public float so you can actually see the distance, uh, the delta. And we're going to call this public float, and we're going to call it dx. And then in here, in our start, we're just going to set our initial values. So transform, we're going to set to uh, get component because this is the current component. And we're going to grab the transform. And this just caches our transform for us. And then we're going to uh, set our dx, which is just a flow, equal to 0.0f. And then we're going to grab our, within our update, we're going to first grab our, our target if it exists. I'm actually going to need one more, and that's going to be a private offset of the two um, positions. So I'm going to do not rec offset. That's going to be a vector 3. And so first, what we want to do is make sure that target exists. So we can do, not underscore target. I got ahead of myself. We want to make this, make this just regular target. I like to use underscores when I'm referencing the current um, object, the current game object or class. This just makes it easier to, uh, you know, to distinguish what's this versus others. So what this does is this just just checks to see if the target was set. And if the target was set, what we want to do then is is we want to grab our our offset and the way the offset works is is we're going to um, get one position we're going to get the position a let me bring up mischief again so we basically we'll say this is our player and this is our target so what we want to do is, is we want to get the distance between these two and so the way we do that is is luckily we can just use the vector oh, sorry let me open up this bad boy. So all we have to do to get the offset is set the offset to our target. Uh, position minus our current position. So that's our transform that position. And that's going to give us an offset. And from this offset, then we're going to set our delta x which is going to be our offset square offset dot square magnitude. And from here, this is where we get our distance. So if our distance or dx is less than our range, which is what we have up there, range times range then we're just going to do a quick debug dot log and we're just going to debug range one now let me explain this so what we have here is, is we're, we're looking at our offset right we're grabbing the first position and we're grabbing the second position and we just want to know what uh, we just want to minus those two now uh, because we're using vectors, a lot of this math is, is just straight vector math. So if it's something that you're not familiar with, then you want to brush up on just vector math. Next, what we have is, is our square magnitude. Now, this is going to be a little different from most implementations. Now, if you're used to using the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between two objects, that's um, um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, uh, you're probably wondering, where am I doing the square root? Well, we're not actually doing the square root. 
Um, and in this case, instead of doing the square root, um, we're doing the square magnitude, which is just a lot faster than, than, than doing that. And so in this case, because we're using square magnitude, we actually have to double our range. And so if we jump into Unity now and hit play, oops, we can't hit play because it's not going to do anything. Um, actually, so if we grab our target, we want to drop our player in here, and then we want to give it a range. And let's say a range of five, which is just half of what we have now. Now if I grab our target, and we're just going to lock this in here, and then I'm going to grab the player, and we can look at the units. And as we move this, you see our DX changes. Nothing's being logged yet, but once we reach the five unit mark, boom, you see range one comes in. Now you're probably wondering, it's just about really once we get to 25 is when we get that mark and you're probably wondering why is that 25 well remember in our code we set this to um, to double this and so what the square magnitude is returning it's turning just the magnitude portion which is just the a squared plus b squared portion without the square root sounds complicated however it's the fastest way to get this information. Now let's say now we have this range, right? Let's say we want to do the second range, right? Let's do public float and we want to do mid range, right? And we want to preset that value. We can now we don't need to preset that value. Now, if we jump back into Unity now, I'm just going to stop this. Now we have our mid-range. So let's say we set our mid-range to 2 now. What we can do is, is we can actually come back now and jump into visual code. And we can actually just copy this and just set this to our mid-range value. And call this mid-range 2. And then when we go back into Unity now, we're going to hit play. And because this is happening in the update loop, it doesn't really matter that we didn't set this in the beginning. But also, I went and set a default value. So we also have something to work with. So if I come back into our scene view, and we want to make sure our target is locked, I want to grab our player. And I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see. So we're 10 units away. And as I get, once I get to 5, boom. Now we have the range 1 is firing, which is exactly what we want. Now in this range, we this is where the, the sound actually comes down. So when we get to 2, this is when, if we keep going, right here, a second range happens. And so now we have both of them firing, which is fine because technically you are within those same limits. Uh, once we actually get to to this point, we want the sound to be the loudest when this is close to zero. Not exactly zero, but close to zero. Um, we want this to, to, to be at maximum length. So in the next video, we're going to cover the second part. So what we just covered here is we covered how do we tell the distance between here and here, and also how do we tell that we've reached this distance. And now... In the next video, we're going to cover how do we normalize the sound to fade it from here to here and to fade it from here to here. This is Edison Abelard. I'm out.